Are you the person you're looking for is looking for? Hey guys, um, today I want to talk about the dry, dry season of singleness. The season where you're walking through a desert and you seem to find no water source. <laughs> Yeah. So during my five years of singleness and ongoing, uh, the first three years were extremely difficult. I was struggling in all ways that you can imagine. Um, and then the other two years, which is two years ago until now, it's peaceful. It's been completely peaceful journey. It's, I wouldn't even call it a dry season. I'd say it's a, it's a walk in the park. Uh, but the first three years I want to talk about. I had to learn a lot and unlearn a lot. So God had to refine a lot of stuff in me. I was nonetheless persevering through that desert. I was really, really wanting to get to the finish line or or the or the you know I wanted to get out of the desert but the right way I didn't want to do it my way anymore when I became a surrendered Christian back in 2013 that's it's basically I made a vow that I will not do this life my own way anymore and uh, I'll, I'll explain that in, in a testimony video that I'll make soon. But, uh, and then I dated a guy for two years and then we broke up. He was a Christian. We broke up in 2015 and that's when my singleness journey began. And for three years after that, it was very, very, very hard. I want to explain the journey of those three years and how I found peace in the last two years that I've been single. So basically, all the, fa all the failed relationships I've had in the past, I had to understand why. So I was seeking answers towards that. What's wrong with me? You know how people keep telling you it's not your fault, nothing's wrong with you, um, it's not your fault, it just didn't work out. No, I don't believe that. Something was wrong with me. I know I was a culprit in my failed relationships. I know I was a common denominator. I had issues. And so I was willing to face them, to find them and to deal with them. So I'm like, okay, where do I start? What's wrong with me? So I start to assess. And through the assessments of, you know, trying to think about all the reasons why relationships didn't work out in the past, you know, God started to lead me in the answers through books. I started reading so many books uh, after my failed relationship in 2015. I think I read two books a month. It was, I was just like diving deep into finding answers. And so during those three years, I found out that I was emasculating the men I was with. I was controlling, I was, I had that fake shield of, I don't need you, I'm good without you, I'm strong and uh, I could do it myself and, you know, that, that kind of behavior of uh, a fake shield, uh, a fake strength, you know, I was, uh, I was dipping my feet into the masculine side of not who I was, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but... It's just, I related more with men in my life. I was not a girly girl. I did not have a lot of girlfriends. I didn't like to be feminine. I, I thought femininity was a weakness. So my assessment towards femininity was so off, completely off. So God had to, to teach me that during those three years of singleness in the dry, dry season. He taught me so much about femininity and the identity he gave me that I was rejecting every single year, every single day of my life. I didn't accept the role 
of the woman. So, and that resulted in a lot of failed relationships because I was emasculating the men I was with. I was controlling them. I was trying to wear the pants in the relationship. I was fake. I was not who I was truly meant to be. My identity was completely lost. So through all the books that I read, I learned a lot of things. I learned about my feminine identity. I learned about the roles of genders, the roles of the men and the roles of the woman. I learned about love and respect between a man and a woman, how a woman should respect her men and her men should love his woman. Um, that was lacking in all relationships I had. <laughs> Through that dry season, I was still trying to find a relationship. I was online dating sites. I was, I was seeking, you know? And at one point, God really put his foot down and literally said, how can I teach you when you keep distracting yourself? You're not listening. You're, you're, you're looking elsewhere while I'm trying to teach you, while I'm trying to mold you and refine you and, and you know. So that was a conviction that I received and that really, really, really hurt. I did not like that. I'm like, God, how am I supposed to not look? I can't be single. I'm getting old. I'm this, I'm that. I was justifying everything and... <laughs> God said, mm -mm. how am I supposed to help when you keep distracting yourself with the ways of the world? Because finding a husband, you're doing it your way. Like you're trying to find a husband your own way. You're not trying to be the person that you're looking for is looking for. I love that. And I was not at all. I was not lovable. <laughs> I was not ready for any marriage whatsoever. Anyways, so during those three dry seasons, I was wrestling with God every single day. I was trying to find justifications of getting back online. Um, I was constantly wrestling with God and that was three years long. <laughs> it took three years for me to actually put my foot down and say, okay, God, no more. So anyways, uh, through those books that I read, two of them stood out. So the one book that really helped me is called Captivating by Stacey Eldridge. And her husband wrote a book called Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. Amazing, amazing books. And those two books are meant to be written, Captivating is meant to be written for women to understand about femininity. And while the heart was written for men to understand masculinity, it brought so much clarity in my life about who I am, about my identity in Christ, about my, my purpose in this world, about my struggles and where they come from, the root of, of them all. I'd like to read a few quotes from that book just to, just to share what I learned because it really, really helped me. That's what got me out of the dry season. The one little phrase that was like a punch in my face, it was like a huge wake up call, was true femininity arouses true masculinity. That was a lot for me. I was like, wow, wow, okay. So that phrase just woke me up. A woman in the presence of a good man, a real man, loves being a woman. His strength allows her feminine heart to flourish. His pursuit draws out her beauty. Just like God, a woman is not a problem to be solved, but a vast wonder to be enjoyed. That, that's so true. For too many women forfeit their femininity in order to feel safe and in control. Their strength feels more masculine than feminine. 
There is nothing inviting or alluring, nothing tender or merciful about them. That was me. Hardcore, 100%. Like Eve, after she tasted the forbidden fruit, we women hide. We hide with angry silences and punishing withdrawals. We hide our truest selves and offer only what we believe is wanted, what is safe. We act in self-protective ways and refuse to offer what we truly see, believe, and know. We will not risk rejection or looking like a fool. We hide because we are afraid, and so by hiding, we take matters into our own hands. We don't feel that we are irreplaceable, so we try and make ourselves useful. Eve was made for Adam. There is an incompleteness that hunts us women, makes us yearn for one another. No man can tell us who we are as a woman. No man is the verdict on our soul. Only God can tell us who we are. Romance with him comes first. It must. It has to. Adam is a far too unreliable source. Don't we know that, women? Our core validation, our primary validation, has to come from God. You hear that? Men are not a reliable source. The beauty of a woman is what arouses the strength of a man. That's the attacks why. on your life has much more to do with who you might be in the future than who you have been in the past. If you are going through hell, keep going. Eve is the crown of creation. She embodies the exquisite beauty and the exotic mystery of God in a way that nothing else in all creation even comes close to. And so she is the special target of the evil one. He turns his most vicious malice against her. If he can destroy her or keep her captive, he can run the story. So that was me. All my life, all of my dating years, including the three years of struggle, has been this exactly. So reading that was like... Wake up, Mary. I was done allowing the enemy to guide me in the wrong path. I was just so done. And those three years of struggle finding my identity, I came to a realization that I was done. I was so done. I was like, so done. If your identity, who you think you are, your character, your personality, all of those things are being defined by anybody else but God, you have a misview of who you are and who you're supposed to be. My identity was in the men I was dating. I was codependent. I was seeking acceptance. I was changing myself to please others, to, to, for them to love me better, to like me better, to want me more. To, I was just living for other people. I was living for the men I was with. I was doing everything for them even if they didn't do a thing for me. So, see these? Yeah. <laughs> these, this book, I write everything I like from the books I read into this book. It's, uh, it's just amazing. I just refer to these when I want a refresher, when I want a reminder of the things I've learned and the things that spoke to me. All right, guys. So that's like a little bit of my testimony in a nutshell towards the three years of the dry, dry, single season. And you'll understand why in my testimony, what happened in that last third year of struggle there's a lot of stuff that happened in that last year of struggle, a lot of bad stuff that really, really woke me up to the point where I was like, enough is enough, no more. I, I, I got so angry at the life I was leading ugh, that I just literally surrendered everything.
everything, even a desire for marriage, a desire for kids, everything. And that's when God blessed me with peace. Anyways, this video is way too long, so I'm gonna cut it short or cut it long. I don't know. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. Bye.